We just saw how to create and solve an optimization model from scratch. Next, let's look at using evaluators in simulation problems. An evaluator computes values for the problem functions for any given values of the uncertain variables. It can be used to obtain control from the solver SDK before or after a simulation to check the progress of the solution process, to display a message, etc. For a simulation, there are three such evaluators available. Eval type simulation begin can be called at the beginning of a simulation run. Eval type simulation complete can be called at the end of a simulation run. An eval type simulation is called after every simulation and can be used to obtain control during the solution process in order to display a message or check for a user abort action. Simulation progress information evaluators are always optional. However, when running a simulation containing uncertain functions, the evaluator of type eval type sample is a must. Now, let's look at one example to review the way your application program should call the solver SDK routines to define and run a simulation problem and how to use the evaluator function to pass the values for the uncertain functions. Let's use college fund example, which is an investment application. The goal of this problem is to ensure by investing sufficient money over 17 years, we have enough funds to withdraw for the seven years for college expenses. The uncertain variables are the annual portfolio return, which are uncertain, and we use sign normal distributions to model them in each year. We have the initial investment and a fixed deposit value for the first 17 years. Then we need to calculate the gain or loss and the ending balance for each year. The ending balance of this year is the beginning balance for the next year and so on. Here is the code. Again, we have a Windows Form application and a directive. Your program should first create a new instance of the class problem using this line of code. Here I have created a block of uncertain variables for portfolio returns and then set the size of the block to 24. Then similarly, I have created two blocks for the gain and loss and ending balance uncertain functions. Here I have added the uncertain variables and functions to the problem. In this for loop, I have specified the distributions of the variables just added. Then I request user input for the deposit amount, beginning balance, and the withdrawal amount to be used in the simulation analysis. Here I call the evaluator to compute the uncertain functions. That is where we tell the SDK to call evaluator function on every Monte Carlo sample, on every trial. So what is going to happen is that function is going to be called 1000 times as long as we have a thousand trials and each time the input of the uncertain variables are going to have new different sample values and we are going to calculate what the Excel spreadsheet could calculate for us. And then here I pass on the user inputs to the evaluator. Then I call the simulation engine and set the number of trials and perform the simulation. Then I write some of the results including the mean of portfolio return in the first year and the mean of ending balance at the end of year 24. The catch statement handles any exceptions. Now we are getting through the evaluator object, which is passed in as an argument. We are getting beginning balance, deposit, and withdrawal parameters, and then a little further down we are getting values for the portfolio return, which are the uncertain variables. 
That is the sample being passed in, in this Monte Carlo trial. Then we are calculating what a spreadsheet could calculate for us. We are using the loop to save us from the problem of replicated formulas doing the same thing. It is important that when we calculate the values, we put them back in the evaluator problem functions. We are putting them back into the object that was passed in. In the first loop, I compute the gain and loss and ending balance for the first 17 years that we only deposit money. In the next loop, I compute the uncertain functions for the years we only withdraw money from the investment account. Finally, we tell the SDK to continue simulating by returning engine action continue. Now we can build and then run the application. Here we have the chance to input the parameters. Let's use 1000 for the deposit amount, 1000 for the beginning balance, and 20,000 for the withdrawal amount. Here are the results. Now let's set a breakpoint in line 166 to inspect the uncertain variable values on each simulation trial. And let's run it. 1000 for deposit amount, 1000 for beginning balance, and 20,000 for the withdrawal amount. Now let's check the interest rate iterate by hovering on it. Let's expand this array. These are all the values that are being passed in. These are Monte Carlo trial values. Let's click continue. Now we have come back. We are on a new Monte Carlo trial. So if we hover over interest rate again, we can see that we have different values from the last time. Let's click continue. Now we are on a new Monte Carlo trial. Let me remove the breakpoint and hit continue to get the results. 